So I moved from a personal development blog to a bis to a business blog mm. for startup founders and entrepreneurs to share exactly mm. business ideas and how they can start businesses, how they can find partners and what have you. You gave it five years so that you see how it's uh, panning out. Yes. It there is no cool. government that <laughs> creates jobs. They cannot employ everyone. I mean, the government is the biggest employer, but their work is to ensure we have good environment mm. to do business. And that is what the government of Kenya has constantly tried to do. Hello guys and welcome to Business Tuesday. As usual, this is the program where you learn everything about business. Uh, remember, on this program you get all the insights as far as business is concerned from the, the big companies and the CEOs. And uh, guys, on today's program I'm so happy because uh, we are bringing to you a guest. Uh, you may look at him and think that uh, he's very young, but I can tell you at the end of the program you'll agree with me that uh, this guy is maze, tunasemanga kwa kiswahili, siyo mchezo, eh? Uh, is, uh, these are some of the big minds that are uh, probably not everybody is aware of them that they exist in Kenya, but you'll agree with me at the end of the interview. Again, these are Business Tuesday and my name is Mor So, you know, guys, welcome to the program. Now, let me allow my guest to say hi and also he tells tell us who he is. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Ya yeah, salimia watu kwa kamera yako hapa, alafu tell them who you are. Well, hi everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and asante sana Morris for yes. bringing me here. My name is Kimani Patrick. I'm the CEO for the Calstic Group and the Calstic Group um, I wear three hats. Uh, as the, of course the first one is the CEO of the Calstic Group and the Calstic Group we have two products. One is uh, Inverse Magazine, a uh, business magazine for the senior business leaders. We publish that every two months. And after that, we have now the annual East Africa CEO's Breakfast. It's a, a business event for senior business leaders, for executive networking, doing business, meeting investors that we hold every single year. We have held it for the last four years, 2018, 2019, 2020. And this year, it actually happened on 5th. March at Moving Oh, Hotel. it has happened already. It has happened already, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, so basically those are my main hats. Um, of course, the Calstic Group is a, a corporate communications agency. We help organizations to enhance their brand awareness, to generate leads, and at the same time, manage their reputations through content. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very well, guys. As I, I told you from the beginning that we are having a big mind on the show today, uh, my guest is wearing two hats, as he has just explained it over there. And uh, now we want to get into it because so that you can be able to know my guest very well. So, Kimani, we are very privileged for you to show up on the show. Asante. Because uh, there's a time I was uh, tweeting and uh, I was telling people that uh, expect a big guest on the show this coming uh, very soon, probably in the next two weeks or so, and they were wow. like, okay. Yes. And I just gave them a hint. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, everybody was like, uh, that would be very nice. Yes. So, guys, today... Kimani is here, and I know you'll be very happy at the end of the interview. So, Kimani, yes. take us down the memory lane about yes. what you've been doing. What I've been up to? Well, my journey started a long time ago. Not really a long time ago, because I'm not old. Of course, a long time ago, I'm not born. <laughs> and um, I went to school at the University of Nairobi, pursued Bachelor of Arts, mm. majored in communication. And... Um, during those days, I could do motivational speaking every once in a while, and uh, it is during those days that I discovered myself, and I thought, hey, um, how about I do a business magazine mm. uh, to motivate people? You see, what I was doing is motivation, and I thought mm. I can do the Motivator magazine. Actually, the first name was the Motivator magazine. Mm. But it see, was uh, such a plain name. Yes, I, I mean, <laughs> I was in motivational speaking, so the Motivator, mm. um, of course, some people had nicknamed me that mm. and uh, during that time it didn't start that was in 2014 but later in 2015 I came up with the name Invesk. Invesk was actually the first one uh, I registered Invesk as a sole proprietor and we started I formed a small team did uh, a business um, blog for personal development solutions so we could write articles and share about how you can be productive how you can grow your mind, change your attitude, mm. and those kind of things. 
Mm. And, um, you know, every single day, you know, a vision is not always clear at the beginning. You get to learn every single day. Yes. So, as we grew, we decided that uh, instead of just sharing about inspiration and personal development, you know, we can focus on how people can start and build businesses. Okay. So I moved from a personal development blog to a, bis to a business blog mm. for startup founders and entrepreneurs to share exactly mm. business ideas and how they can start businesses, how they can find partners and what have you. Mm. And uh, I did that for 2016. I decided now this content it can now become a magazine. And uh, I launched the magazine on um, the 30th, it was on a Friday, 30th March 2017. Mm. But after that, things didn't really work out. And so Actually, next... I was about to, sorry for catching you short, I was <laughs> yes. about to ask you that question. You know, in this generation now, we are having a generation where people don't love reading so much. Yes. And uh, people would uh, be very happy to go on social media and read those short, short stories very fast and uh, run around with them but now when you tell somebody to read a whole page story it becomes a problem true and you somebody with the communication background you are telling us that you went to university and study communication yes and here you are doing magazine yes. uh, why did you think of doing something else well i really don't have a specific answer maybe that is the only thing i knew yeah. um, and uh, but of course there's some other things that i wanted to do uh, okay. because early when I was young, I always wanted to do business. I never wanted to be employed. Mm. Uh, and uh, three ideas were on the on the page. The, with the Motivator magazine, I wanted to do chicken business. I wanted to do chaco business. I never started chaco business. Chicken <laughs> business I did mm. for some months, and then it didn't work out. Mm. That was back in 2014. Mm. I was still in uni. But now, uh, coming back to where I left about the story of the magazine is... Um, mm. Invask now didn't work out. The magazine, everybody, you know, when we did the launch, we mm. had planned to make a lot of money, but we made losses, and everyone in the team left. Mm. And when they was left, I felt like an imposter. I don't know whether you know about the imposter mm. syndrome. Mm. I, I mean, these people are leaving because I'm not good enough, I cannot be able to pull this out, I'm not even an entrepreneur. You and mean I, the whole team left you? They left. Mm. In a span of two months, they left. I mean, there's nothing we're doing here. We made losses. You can't even sustain us. So they left. And um, it was very difficult for me. I went into depression since that time. Mm. That was around April, May 2017 up to September 2018. Mm. And uh, so the remaining part of the year and the whole of 2018, I really didn't publish the magazine. I was just doing a couple of things here. And of course, during that period, I was publishing the magazine. I'd done around six editions. Some people had discovered that I'm good in writing and that I'm good in doing publication. So they could give me a couple of jobs here and there mm. to do a publication, a, a, a publication of their company, a newsletter, write a story about them. So that is how I sustained myself. Mm. And, um, but later in 2019, I decided uh, it is time to bring back the magazine. So part of the reason the magazine did not work mm. is one, it was purely digital. The magazine was, oh, I was okay. distributing it digitally, mm -hmm. and I was charging for that. So, and I didn't have how, the how necessary much, how much infrastructure. Initially, I was selling the magazine at 100 bob. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to 250. And you mean, I mean, that time I was publishing every single month. And per magazine, I could sell the maximum number of copies I sold was 35. If you multiply 35 by 250, you cannot even pay one person <laughs> in a month. Mm. So it was kind of zero work, but mm. I don't find it, I don't refer it as zero work because it helped us build the brand because mm. we are getting known by day. Mm. So in 2019, I changed the model. And I decided now, instead of now selling the magazine, and instead of, uh, instead of making money through selling ads, mm. how about I distribute the magazine for free? Digitally, anyone who has a smartphone or a computer can access our magazine. Mm. That is one. Number two, we print copies, but now instead of selling them mm. to individuals, mm. we distribute them to hotels, to corporate for, for, banks. You mean for free? Yes. Mm. We, we distribute them to five-star and four-star hotels within Nairobi metropolitan area. Mm. We distribute to banks, 
corporate section area. You know, bank has the retail and the corporate section. So the corporate section, mm. we distribute the magazines and corporate offices. Mm. So that is the model that I've worked on since 2019 up to now. I gave it five years so that it can pick. But the good thing is now the uptake has been high. We have been able to record over 14,500 subscribers of, of our magazine. Every time we publish, these people are always on standby on their phones through email to access our magazine. Mm. They can, they get there email and if somebody has not subscribed they can just go to our website invask.co.k stroke magazine and also we have um, digital stands where mm. our, our magazine can be read without logging in you don't need to give us your email address your name you just go there and you just and go read it isu.com mm. iwsw.com stroke invask or magsta mm. magsta is m a Z G T E R mm. dot com and you will be able to read our magazines for free. So we capitalized on those numbers to be able to get advertising features and also to be able to get now advertisers to advertising the magazine. Now yes. uh, very well explained. Yes. And as someone might be quick to ask, yes. so within these five years that uh, you are saying uh, you gave it five years so that you see how it's uh, panning out. Yes. Uh, what, how far now can you say you have gone and if you check it, maybe you look at it, can you see that you have made a step? A lot of steps because number one, the, ma the magazine itself now is able to sustain itself. Mm -hmm. It is paying two editors per month. And, and I mean, that is something I'm proud to, 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 to do. And you're looking at the team growing, including the number of writers, because mm -hmm. you have five part-time writers. You're looking at growing the numbers. So we cannot compare now to where we were mm -hmm. uh, back in 2016, 2017. So that is a step. And then if you remember, I do three things. That is the magazine. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, uh, after 2017, it was very difficult. I thought um, I can invite a couple of my friends we discussed how business was had in 2017. Remember, we had a very long election year mm. period, two presidential elections, campaigns, and everything, and business was affected so much. Mm. So I thought I can invite my friends for a breakfast event. We sit in a round table mm. and discuss how we can help each other as young people. So we call, I call it Young CEOs Breakfast. Mm. And you see, I had thought of inviting 20 people. Mm -hmm. More than 300 registered. And at the end of it, we got 95 attending that event. Which was a plus. On Which was a plus for me. I mean, we held a very big event at Lake Origins in 2018. That is February 7th. And mm. people mm. who attended are people I didn't even know. And they were asking, is this something you do? You do it monthly, quarterly, or once per year? Mm. And I'm like, how I did that? How, so, sorry again for Candy cutting you short. How yes. did that change the perspective of you uh, running your business? Because you invited 20 and yes. you ended up getting like a 90 plus, let's yes. say. Yes. D were these people registering so that they attend the event or they just came? They were registering. Mm. I did follow up. They bought their tickets and came. Mm. So there's a lot that goes into organizing an event. Mm -hmm. You see, initially I had planned for 20 people. Of course, I had the infrastructure. Mm. I need People need to register through a sign-up form online. The, when they register, we have to call them. We provide the pay bill number so that they can buy their ticket. I have to look for speakers mm. and the, the panelists for the event. I have to go to and negotiate rates for the hotel and do the booking. Mm. So all that, I had set that into place. Yes. But now when these people came, they, they requested for more. Mm. So they asked if we could have it in 2019. So I organized it again in 2019. Which and, happened. Which happened. Mm -hmm. And now in 2019, I discovered now, hey, look here. It's not only the young people who are attending. Some business leaders who are running organizations present in the whole country, other in the East African regions, and others who are coming out from as far as Nigeria, they came to the event. Mm. And I thought this is no longer the Young CEO's Breakfast. It is a CEO's Breakfast for now, all Now, hold, hold, uh, hold that thought. My director is telling that we need to take a short break. Yes. Of course, you are going to pick it there. We'll, we'll pick it we'll from there. come yes. back. I, yeah. I, I can see you are having a, such an interesting story. Guys, I told you that uh, we are having a guest, uh, and uh, this guest is so inspiring because he's, he also used to be a motivational speaker. I believe you are still... Uh, Motivation is still in me. <laughs> now, let, let's uh, take a short break. We are coming back. Guys, I remember this is a business TV as usual, and my name is Maurice Owino. Keep watching Lolo TV. So I moved from a personal development blog to a, bis to a business blog mm -hmm. for startup founders and entrepreneurs to share exactly mm. business ideas 
and how they can start businesses, how they can find partners and what have you. You gave it five years so that you see how it's uh, panning out. Yes. It there is no is government that creates <laughs> jobs. They cannot employ everyone. I mean, the government is the biggest employer, but their work is to ensure we have good environment mm. to do business. And that is what the government of Kenya has constantly tried to do. Welcome back guys and uh, if you're just joining us uh, I know you have missed a lot but still you have a lot to cover so no need to worry Maze. Uh, we are having a guest on the show his name is Kimani but again I'm, go I'm going to allow him to introduce himself for those who are just tuning in right now. We know in Kenya people are very busy people and probably some who are still on their way home and I know there are people that are just getting home right now so we are going to tell them that uh, they have not missed a lot because we still have a lot to cover. Guys, remember, these are Business Tuesday as usual, and my name is Morso Wino. Let me allow my guest again probably just to say hi for the sake of those who are just tuning in right now. Say hi to them. Hi, viewers. Karibu tena, and uh, for those who are just joining us, my name is Kimani Patrick, the CEO for the Kastri Group, publisher for Invest Magazine, and the lead organizer for the East Africa Annual CEO's Breakfast. And mm. thank you so much again, Morris, <laughs> for having me on the show. Mm. You, yes. are, you are very much welcome. I, I, I can see at the bottom of our TV people are sending uh, some messages. They are saying, uh, hey, your guest is uh, looking so young, but uh, <laughs> very inspiring. You know, yes. this is why we always bring people on this show. Because yes. imagine somebody like you, maybe people there in Kisumu, they don't know you exist. True. And they are just wondering, this guy is very young, but yes. he's having a lot to share. True. How they wish we, you could be coming or we could be bringing people like you regularly on the show. Yes. But uh, guys, uh, we will keep on bringing people and even Kimani still will come back next time yes. when he finds time. But today, let's give him a chance again to... There's uh, something we were talking about before we took a break. And now he's still going to explain more on it. You remember what we are discussing? Yes, see, yes, breakfast. Yes. yes. And even Kisumu to Tanda. Mm -hmm. Kisumu is an amazing <laughs> place. I've been there five but, times. Really? And, uh, there's a guy, there's a friend of mine who told me, you need to bring the CEO's breakfast to the lakeside. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, mm -hmm. we are taking the CEO's breakfast to Kisumu mm -hmm. very soon. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking about now 2019, I have discovered that it is not just young people who are attending the CEO's breakfast. Mm -hmm. I discovered people are coming from different countries to the event. People who have been in business for long, big organizations, executives mm -hmm. from big corporates are coming to the event. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, um, this CEO's breakfast is no longer young. It is now CEO's breakfast. And it is at, in 2019 that I decided now mm -hmm. the next one is not going to be young CEO's breakfast, but annual CEO's breakfast. Mm -hmm. And you know, during that was after immediately after February 7th when we held the CEO's breakfast for the second time. Mm -hmm. During that year, some people are calling me and telling me, you know, I met this guy at the event and he has invested me in, in my business. Mm. I met a friend who introduced me to his colleague who invested in my business. We mm. started projects together. Others were giving testimonies of how they have gotten clients at the event. And now mm. we discovered, hey, CU's Breakfast is not just a place to meet and talk, mm. but a full discovery platform mm. where business leaders converge for quite a number of things. Number one, to meet old friends. You know, in business, you're very busy. You <laughs> mm -hmm. meet people who you might you not find time also to hang around with people. Yes, to hang around with smart people. Mm -hmm. People who are in business like you, who are like-minded. Mm -hmm. It is also a place to share your business failures mm -hmm. without fear of being judged because everyone is there to help you to grow your business. And then, apart from that, it is also a place to meet investors. Mm -hmm. People who can invest in your business, people who you can partner to start business with, and also a place to meet customers. We have executive customers there for people who are, in, in, you know, into B2B business. Mm. They are there to do business with you. And at the same time, it is a place to eat. Hmm? It, is you, a <laughs> it is a it breakfast. It is a breakfast yeah. event. We have amazing <laughs> breakfast item there for us to eat. Mm. Yes, you know, we, we, we always hold this event at five star and seven star hotels mm. yes so that was 2019 in 2020 we held it again mm. oh 2020 2020 was slightly one. before covid came mm. Mm. we had the third annual east africa CEO's breakfast and mm. we were at move and pick hotel 
we had over 100 people attending mm. and that was 2020 covid came things were very difficult but we mm. said even if covid is here with us mm. business has to continue yes. people have to continue learning how they can you know bootstrap uh, some 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 areas that became affected by covid and this year mm. We were back at Move and Pick a couple of weeks ago. Oh, this year you have, you have had one again. We have already had one. Over <laughs> 150 business leaders converged at Move and Pick Hotel. It is a very amazing hotel here in Westlands. Mm. And we were discussing about responsible enterprise leadership. And, and if somebody is saying these are just talks, just mm. go on Facebook or on Google, just search East Africa CEO's Breakfast. You will find videos of of. Uh, of Past events, you will find photos of past events so that you can see the people who come, the who is who's of this country. People mm. like Vimalsha mm. come to this event. People like Dashan Chandari have been to this event. Mm -hmm. And so many other business leaders. This is the event that people now can come and build businesses. Because mm. we say what we do at Inverse and Cals and, and, uh, and the CEO's breakfast, mm. it is not for money. I do not do it for money, but to provide a platform where business Actually, leaders I, I wanted to ask you that question that yes. uh, for, for someone who is watching us, probably somebody is planning to get into business yes. and is wondering, hey, at this age, you, are, you can pull that crowd or all those investors and uh, put, uh, put in such big hotels like the ones that you're mentioning. Yes. Uh, one would be, again, quick to ask, yes. how do you arrange for all these, how, who pays for the hotel and how does it all what is their arrangement kind of for these things to happen? I'll speak about that shortly. So, mm -hmm. we're saying, this is a place, eh? you see, Kenya for now, we have graduates graduating every single year and they do not have jobs. Yes. I normally say it is not the responsibility of the government to provide jobs. It there is, is no <laughs> government that creates jobs. They cannot employ everyone. I mean, the government is the biggest employer, but their work is to ensure we have good environment mm. to do business and that is what the government of kenya has constantly tried to do mm. to make environment good for people to do business mm. when these people do business they are the ones who create employment it is the work of the private sector to provide employment and a show like this one where people i'm um, here to talk about business the young people get inspired they start businesses and mm -hmm. they create jobs yes. so that is what the ceo's breakfast and invest magazine is all about mm -hmm. now to your question you're asking about how to start a business or, not really how, yes. how how did you manage to pull, to, to, to pull the, out all the we can say all the nitty gritties are to, about the event yeah, about yes. the event L like i mentioned earlier organizing yeah. an event is quite a difficult task yeah? but the event to participate at the event is not free. You pay a ticket. Mm. The ticket for the CEO's breakfast cost, cost 6,000 shillings. So now that one per each. Helps, yes, per person mm -hmm. for the three-hour event. Mm. Now, that money goes into paying for the hotel, all the activities that go to the hotel. Mm. There is, of course, photography and videography. Mm. There is the team that makes sure that this event is is um, is delivered mm. to its standards it mm. pays out so the, the ticket also pays for the team and mm. also for the marketing and publicity of the event mm. now if somebody is thinking of planning for an event there is a lot of things to think about you need to think who are you targeting and mm. it is not just an event for every uh, kind of business you need to know who is your target market number two mm. if you're organizing an event when will it be what time where mm. who are the speakers you see and what is the whole itinerary or the program mm. of, of the event so those are the things that you have to think beforehand and then work mm. backwards mm. yes and also now when you discover everything that you need it also helps you to know uh, who will i need the expertise the human capital mm. that you are required to have in order to to organize this kind of an event yes. mm. of which at the end of it you as the organizer you will have walked home with something of course you get home with something Yes, even if it is satisfactory, I mean, you get a lot uh, about from, from the event. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, for example, the main benefit I get from the event is not even the money, but about, I told myself, right now I'm 27 years old and 8 months. Mm -hmm. I'm, turning 20, I'm turning 28 in a couple of months. Eh? Mm -hmm. And I told myself, before that, the most important thing that I'm doing is building my social capital. Mm -hmm getting to network with senior business leaders, with the leaders in government and everyone else. Mm -hmm. So that when I'll now delve into other big businesses, at least I'll have mm -hmm. people to work with me. 
So that helps me to get so many executive friends, so many mentors. Yeah. And at the same time, I get clients for Calstick. You know, I said Calstick, we do corporate communication solutions. There's mm. companies who need brand positioning strategies. There's companies who need PR for their, for, 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 for their products or the whole organization. Mm. Some, some companies are launching products. We do product design. We do digital marketing. So when we do the CEO's breakfast, People come to ask my to ask me mm. what other services do you do? You then know they have already seen twice. what I can do, mm. so they come to ask for more. What, so what during else? the CEO's breakfast, I now get clients for my mm. business. Very very well. And now, yes. how do you do it differently? Because I know we have got so many companies that do PR, PR and such and services and that we are also offering. Yes. What is it that uh, you are doing differently that uh, can make somebody? Yes. feel like I want to work with you yes. and not the other company. Now, for us, eh, when we talk about content marketing, digital marketing and everything digital, number one, mm. our differentiation or what makes us different is not even the services we offer, but how we do it mm. and the expertise. You know, the people the in team. my team mm. are former journalists, uh, mm. media people like you. They are people who know which content sells to write the Add the, add the good words. Mm. You know, when you're talking about a product, product description. The good headlines and captions. Yes. Mm. Content copies for your product, content copies for mm. uh, your social media. Because we say it is not just about content. Mm. For us, we create value driven content. Mm. Content that when somebody reads, they mm. want to purchase that product. You know, mm. content that inspires action. Mm. When we do content copywriting for your website, when somebody visits your website, they will be inspired by what you do. They will be able to fully understand mm -hmm. what you offer. Mm -hmm. When we write features on our magazine, mm -hmm. somebody will be able to read your story and get inspired to mm -hmm. do e-business with you and even tell you to tell his or her friends and colleagues about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So what we do is our differentiation is in what we offer and we work with you. We normally say... Part of our people at the Calstic group is our customers. When you're working on a product, let's say we are launching a digital campaign mm. for a new product that you have, uh, that you have launched. Mm. Part of our team includes your product manager. Mm. Because <laughs> you form our team, which we now sit together, mm. take account of your budget, mm -hmm. take account of your objectives, so that when you're planning the campaign, the strategies we use, we have everything factored out mm. to work to be able to meet the, the end goal. The end and that goal. is now what our, our differentiator is. Very well. I, I know we are almost winding up. Yes. But I, I want you to talk to Kenyan youth. And also there's, uh, there has been these uh, thoughts that uh, most of the Kenyan youth, mm. they don't like doing business. Yes. Uh, you find them, uh, they just want the white collar job and uh, many of them, they just want this high standard kind of life yes. without the earning. Yes. Can you talk to Kenyan youth and uh, also tell us uh, why do you think many businesses fail? Mm. One, eh? mm. talking about why many businesses fail, mm. lack of product market fit, you, you have a good product for you but not for the market. Mm -hmm. That is number one. Number two, mm. people create products for markets which do not exist. Then the other one is of course lack of investment. Mm -hmm. There are some businesses which are capital in intensive. If you do not have money to market your product, no one will know that it exists. Mm -hmm. The other reason is, uh, of course, uh, you start a business whose passion you do not have or you do not have the skills. Mm -hmm. So you, you do not have the drive mm -hmm. to grow the business. And for Kenyan youth, who sometimes I see on the streets of Nairobi, on the streets of Dika and Juja, where I'm most, most of the time, mm -hmm. they walk very defeated. <laughs> in a way that I do not understand mm. one, it is good to aspire to have a corporate job, a white collar job you know our leaders are saying all youth should, should start businesses, I mean when all of us start businesses, who are we going to employ surely, mm. Mm. so we have uh, people who are cut out to be entrepreneurs, to do business there's people who are cut out to be employed in these businesses and that is why I say, you see Jesus Christ is the owner of the gospel but he had a team of 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. So you can be good as an entrepreneur. The most important thing is do a soul searching and ask yourself, how do you want to build your life? Mm 
Do you want to build yourself as an entrepreneur, do business and what type of business? I'm sure in the next show we'll talk about how to evaluate business ideas. Yes, yes. So ask yourself, are you cut out to be an entrepreneur to do business or mm. are you cut out to to climb the corporate ladder? So the most important thing, I was reading a book by Esther Moshemi, the CEO of uh, Samti Group and the, the, the foreword is written by the very, former very quick CEO now. of uh, Safaricom and he was saying, yeah? Mm-hmm. Most people are so keen on climbing the corporate ladder, but they fail to first figure out whether the ladder is on the wrong, is on the right wall. So make sure whatever you are doing is the right thing that you are supposed to do. Whether the business, whether the job, make sure you're doing things that you love and that you're passionate about where you want to grow. Mm, that that's, is very that's important. That's food for thought for them now. Uh, guys, uh, as you have said, uh, the, many people are saying that they wish we had a lot of time so that we discuss more because uh, they are saying that we can see the guest is having a lot to share with, uh, with us today. But unfortunately, according to my director, they are telling us that uh, our time is up. Sir. But uh, as we promised, we will call you again. You come to the show so that we share more because I know there is uh, one part that we have not even talked about. Yes. But I know we can just say thank you very we, much. We can for, always create time. Yeah, yes, we will create another time and we will come back and share more. So from us, we say thank you very much for finding time to come You're on welcome. Business Tuesday. Yes. I know many people have been inspired like we promised them when uh, we are starting the show. Uh, guys, uh, that marks the end of our program today. Our guest again will be joining us some other time because uh, based on uh, some of the comments that uh, we are reading there, people are saying, you come back. And uh, we are um, going to um, keep um, that um, promise. I will, I will be sure to do that. <laughs> yeah, yes. so that marks the end of the program today, guys. Uh, thank you very much for finding time to be with us on Business Tuesday. Again, there's another Tuesday coming up. And as usual, we'll keep on bringing you guests every Tuesday. Thank you very much. My name is Maurice Awino, and thank you very much. Keep watching Lolo TV. Africanacity is not just a word, it is part of who we are and our commitment to working with you to find a way to get things done. We love Africanacity. We are one with you.